Hey Swarmers, welcome back to The Hive. There's been a lot of talk in recent years about windmills, from causing cancer to decimating bird populations to producing air-polluting fumes. Today, we're gonna chase down a few of those windmill rumors and see which ones are nothing but hot air. No wind equals no TV. The windmills are wonderful, but you know, when the wind doesn't blow, they really do cause problems. We have no energy this week. Well, we, hopefully the wind will start blowing pretty soon. Darling, darling, is the wind blowing today? I'd like to watch television, darling. darling. Please tell the wind to blow. Let's start with a very important distinction. Windmills are not wind turbines. Windmills convert wind energy directly into mechanical energy for tasks like milling grain, which is where the name comes from, or pumping water. The earliest known windmills date back to 500 AD. Wind turbines, on the other hand, convert wind energy into electricity, which is stored in batteries or transmitted over power lines. The first wind turbine was invented in 1888. Because wind is indeed intermittent, when wind energy output decreases, utilities simply draw more power from other sources, including solar arrays and hydroelectric dams, to maintain consistent electrical service. So yes, if the wind stopped blowing, a wind turbine would stop converting wind energy into electrical energy. However, since turbines make up only a portion of how your energy is generated, your TV will not, in fact, turn off on a windless day. Windmills lower the value of your home. And if you own a house with envision of some of these monsters, uh, your house is worth 50% of the price. If you're in sight of a windmill, watch the value of your house go down by 65%. If you, if you have a windmill anywhere near your house, congratulations, your house just went down 75% in value. Do wind turbines negatively affect the value of your home? In some cases, yes, they do. If a property's value depends on the view, wind turbines negatively affect value. And that negative effect increases the closer a property is to a turbine. But where a property's value does not depend on the view, the impact can be negligible. Currently, there are no recent completed studies available that suggest devaluation in the 50 to 75% range mentioned. Noise from windmills causes cancer. And they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? <laughs> you know, the thing makes it so... According to the American Cancer Society, there is no credible evidence linking the noise from wind turbines to cancer. There is, however, plenty of evidence linking air pollution from coal production to heart disease, respiratory problems, and lung cancer. Critics have linked wind turbine operations to electromagnetic fields, shadow flicker, audible noise, low frequency noise, and infrasound. These could disrupt sleep, cause headaches, or even cause mild nausea. But researchers have examined a number of health studies related to wind farms and concluded in a 2014 report posted on the National Institutes of Health website that turbines pose no threat beyond that. And they suggested those problems could be remedied by placing turbines in a way that minimizes exposure to surrounding homes. Windmills are graveyards for birds. And of course, it's like a graveyard for birds. If you love birds, you'd never want to walk under a windmill because it's a very sad, sad sight. It's like a cemetery. We put a little, we put a little statue for the poor birds. Yes, wind turbines do kill birds, with some estimates as high as half a million per year. To put this into perspective, though, cats kill an estimated 2.4 billion birds, collisions with glass buildings kill another 600 million birds, collisions with vehicles 214 million, and collisions with power lines and electrocution from power lines around 30 million. It would seem wind turbines are the least of our feathered friends' problems. Studies suggest that deaths by turbine can be significantly decreased by simply siting farms out of migratory paths, and testing is underway to determine if different colors, lighting, and reflective paints will ward off birds in flight. Windmills are very expensive and not made in the USA. 
An economy based on wind. I never understood wind, and I know windmills very much. I've studied it better than anybody. I know it's very expensive. They're made in China and Germany mostly. Very few made here, almost none. According to the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, most of the components of wind turbines installed in the United States are manufactured here. There are 500 wind-related manufacturing facilities located across 41 states, and the U.S. wind industry currently employs more than 114,000 people. As for price tag, wind power is more expensive than power from old established power plants, but is cost competitive with any new power plant and technology innovations and market building incentives have helped to dramatically lower costs over the last 20 years. Most of the commercial scale wind turbines today cost between three and four million dollars installed, which sounds like a lot, but when you consider that wind is free, Operational costs are nearly zero once a turbine is erected. Manufacture of windmills releases fumes. But they're manufactured tremendous, if you're into this, tremendous fumes, gases, are spewing into the atmosphere. You know, we have a world, right? So the world is tiny compared to the universe. So tremendous, tremendous amount of fumes and everything. You talk, you talk about the carbon footprint, fumes are spewing into the air, right? It's spewing. Whether it's in China, Germany, it's going into the air, it's our air, their air, everything, right? It's true that wind power isn't a zero emission energy source. Greenhouse gas emissions are produced when wind turbines are manufactured, built, maintained, and decommissioned. However, wind power's carbon footprint is among the smallest of any energy source. Coal's carbon footprint is almost 90 times larger than that of wind energy, and the footprint of natural gas is more than 40 times larger, according to the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Well, we hope we've answered some of those windmill questions blowing through your minds. Have any others you'd like us to tilt at? Comment below and don't forget to subscribe to The Swarm. Thanks for joining us, Swarmers. We'll see you next time.